Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are in Texas at a very special landmark and I'm not alone. So I'm going to introduce you to some familiar face right now and then tell you a little bit more about the Battle of San Jacinto. Hey guys, do you remember Nebraska? He went with I us to it. the Smithsonian Zoo and uh, you guys have been asking for him to come back. So, here we are. We're back. Okay guys, we're gonna start off right here. This is the Battleground State Historic Site. And as you can see, we have a map. Now, if we were to do the entirety of this trail, we could go about 3.2 miles and it would have a lot of really cool things along the way to tell us a little bit more about the battle itself. But today we're gonna focus most of our attention right here. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the San Jacinto Monument or Battle, this is actually one that was big on the Texas independence seeking mission for those who were in Texas who wanted to gain the ground from Mexico. <laughs> that was a mouthful, so I'm gonna simplify it as we go along. But basically, at one point in time, where we are currently standing, right here in Texas, was actually a part of Mexico. Believe it or not, Texas was not always in the United States. Weird, right? But now we can find out a little bit more about what brought it in and actually made it a part of the United States by winning a few battles along the way. And this is one of the most noted battles other than the Alamo, so it's definitely one that you're gonna wanna look a little bit deeper into, but right now, what is that? It's huge. Look at these edgings, guys. Oh my gosh, there's so much detail. And as we kind of go along the structure on each side, there's something a little bit different to kind of tell the story of Texas. So we're gonna kind of walk around, see what we can find as we go, and focus on some of those details. <laughs> so what do you think about it so far? It's massive. It's so, so big. It's so, so huge. You can see this thing from miles and miles away. Um, as we started coming down the road, we started seeing the oil field stuff just like popping up. And then all of a sudden, here it is in the distance. And we still had like, what, 1.4 miles to get here? Yeah. It, it's really big, guys. Now guys, along this wall right here, it tells the story of Texas. And right here it says the first shot was actually fired in 1835 to 1836. And it was Texans firing on Gonzales. This was what ended in being a San Antonio capture. And as we go on from there, we progress. Now there is a museum on property. I'm not sure if it's open, but in order to go to the museum, we go this way. But in order to follow the story, Nebraska just discovered we go this way. So we're walking around. This is led in disorder. The Texans had had no quarter and gave none. The slaughter was appalling. Victory complete and Texas free. On the following day, General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana self-styled Napoleon of the West received from a generous foe the mercy he had denied Travis at the Alamo and Bannon at Goliad. Hmm. As we move over to this side, we find out that Texans are a interesting fabric of individuals. Now, I personally am a Texan and I've always kind of known this, but just to name a few, if you look on this wall right here behind me, we come from all over and we melt together and we do this really awesome thing where we take all those backgrounds and we turn them into Texans. Now I think this is a great adventure for Nebraska here to be coming on because Nebraska has just recently become a Texan. How are you liking it so far? I mean, it's very true what they say. Everything is 
absolutely bigger in Texas because this is ridiculous. Okay guys, this right here is where we find out the end result and just how big of a deal this really was. Now if you're not familiar with Texas history, I don't expect you to understand this, so I'm going to kind of break it down for you. Basically this was one of the most decisive battles in the world. This brought us in the United States a handful of states, not just Texas. We also ended up with New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, California, Utah, parts of Colorado, Wyoming, Kansas, and Oklahoma just by this final decisive battle at this amazing huge place right here. You don't think of that when you see it in the history books. You think of it as just one war, but in reality this war right here changed everything. Guys, look at this. This is cool. These are the steps and notice Nebraska was like pointing out some of the, the shells that are in these. So these were all probably gathered from somewhere around here because all of this used to be kind of under the ocean at some point in the historic timeline. Obviously guys, this thing is just awesome. And uh, look at this. Ooh, but we're not done yet. Actually, on property, we can also get to the Battleship Texas. So typically I'd break up these two items, but today, for your little bonus happiness at home, I'm gonna show you also the Battleship Texas. And it's just like literally right over here. I don't know if you can see it, but coming soon. Give me just a moment and uh, we're gonna get in the van and drive over to the other parking. We're gonna go over here and read this sign really quickly and take a look at this. Now this guy just talks about how they're leaving this area out here where it is a little bit more wild and rugged looking. Now the reason why they do this is because it's actually a restorative process so that it can bring a lot of the natural animals and things like that back to the land. And if you look here, there's actually some more information about that that I do urge you to definitely stop and read. Right here, you will find that this is an important role that actually helped during the battles. This allowed them some coverage because the landscaping was like this, so they could hide out and wouldn't be discovered or detected easily. So that's why this area right here is left this way. And as you can see, Nebraska is over there checking out those fossils again. Those things are so cool, guys. Guys, do you see this? It is the battleship Texas. We're going up to get a closer look. So, Nebraska, have you ever been to a battleship before? No. Have I you have ever uh, played Battleship before? Yes, I have. I was pretty good. I haven't played in a long time, so I'll just I'll walk away while I'm still up. <laughs> we'll, we'll visualize playing Battleship right now, guys. So as we get closer and closer to this, uh, I can tell you there's a few differences between the game and the reality. Uh, size is only one of them. I don't recall the guns on any of my Battleship games looking quite like this. Uh, yeah. Look at it, it's just right here. I'm gonna call it a gray ghost because I'm sure it has some crazy stories to tell. Now I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to go on board or even into a building, but we're gonna try. They have this nice walkway right here that we're about to go down to get at least a little bit closer. As we walk past this thing, guys, it's huge. It's so huge. And there is a second deck that we can go and observe it from, so we're gonna do that in just a minute. Right now, it is closed to the public. So that's gonna be indefinitely, probably because of COVID, but this allows us to come out here still and see what it looks like. And I think that that in itself is something that puts things into perspective for us, because so often, as civilians, we don't see things like this. So coming out and seeing how big this is and knowing that people had to live on these and go out into the wide open where there were no grocery stores, no amenities, 
is really cool. Okay, see right here, guys, they're actually doing extensive repairs. It's closed indefinitely, so at some point, they will open it again, but until then, we can go over and check out the magnitude of just how massive this is. Okay guys, since the visitor center is not open, I did pull up the battleshiptexas.org site right here. And you can find a lot of information, including um, when exactly the Battleship Texas was commissioned. That was in 1914. And we just learned that whenever it was built originally, it was built for $5,830,000. Thousand dollars. So Nebraska is gonna do the <laughs> the what that is today real quick for us. How much is five million eight hundred and fourteen dollars back in nineteen fourteen equivalent to today? Here's what I found. So it says it's only giving me the dollar version. A hundred dollars in nineteen fourteen is worth $2,603 today. Okay, in addition guys, you can also find some other information including that in 2014, she celebrated her 100th birthday. They had a wonderful ceremony here where they honored any surviving crew members who had been on the ship. The ship served during World War I and World War II, so you can find different information about both of those wars and the part that the Texas served in any of that right here, again, on BattleshipTexas.org. Definitely check it out, and then come out here to see this awesome battleship. I mean, look at this. How could you not just be inspired by the stories that probably are leaking from her every day? So much history. After some extensive research, what did you find out, sir? So after extensive research and conferring with my colleagues, we were able to figure out that a million dollars back in 1914 is in fact worth $26 million wow. today. So $26 million for one million. Correct. And uh, that was... Back in 1914. And the battleship cost over 5.8 million. So that's a lot of money. So do your math. Oh, wow. Okay, so he just made my head hurt like a lot with all that math. So I think we're gonna move on to the other parts of the property. There's a couple other things here and uh, my head is still hurting from all that. Oh gosh, guys. We're gonna just go with the iPhone calculator next time. Yeah. Here it is, this is the next thing on property. And this is a pretty impressively tall monument as well. This is the Grand Lodge of Texas, the Free Masons. So let's go find out a little bit more about why this looks like Davy Crockett on the top. It says here that this was actually erected and dedicated to the lodges of the 13th Masonic District. And it has, of course, all of those lodges within it. So there's one little fact. Joel Robinson. Now, listen, this next one, Adolphus. <laughs> you know, the stories about him go on and on, but we'd be here all day if I did that. All right, then you got Charles B. Stewart, Jazz A. Sylvester, Howard H. Tarrant. Now, Howard, man, I, I really am sorry about what happened to me and Howard. That's a story for another time. Okay guys, so this area right over here is actually where we're at. We're at the Texas camp, and as you can see, there's the Battleship Texas, and then there's this nice area that has all of these beautiful trees that were around. And so we're gonna find out a little bit more about the story here. Okay guys, so right here we have Dizavala Plaza and there are several different 
stones in here behind this border. We're not gonna go in there obviously, but if you pause and read right here, it tells you a little bit about the history of De Zavala and why he was such an important person in the Texas landscape. Originally, he was born in the Yucatan. However, he did live in Texas and was a vital part of Texas becoming an independent area. So if you're interested, pause and zoom in, read a little bit more. It's a cannon! Actually, it's two cannons. It's the Twin Sisters is what they're called. Okay, so Nebraska just found they're called the Twin Sisters. Now, the cool thing about the cannons is on this little plaque you'll find, it tells the story of where these cannons came from and why. And they actually were an appreciation gift from Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, if you're looking at this and saying, this is a Texas history video, why does Cincinnati, Ohio have anything to do with that? There is a good reason. Now through this gift, they actually were saying basically thank you to the forefathers because they brought in a new dawn for freedom by fighting at San Jacinto and earning the rights to this property for all Americans going forward. And there's a whole story here, but basically they came from Cincinnati. It was an appreciation gift and they're really cool. Now guys, these are replicas. They do not have the original twin sisters sitting out here for the weather. But as you can see, it's a pretty cool way to celebrate those. And those original twin sisters, I think are still on display somewhere here in Texas. I'll have to find out more. Now, as we continue to roam through this beautiful area, shaded, gorgeous, there are some other things on property that you might be interested in seeing as well. Um, some other stones over here, there's another small memorial, and a couple of other buildings on premise that are kind of cool. The view here is spectacular, and you can actually walk over to the waterway and see the shipping containers and some of the larger ships coming in and out. Overall, it's just a cool property to come to. Really interesting little tidbit of Texas history, and all in all, I'm happy we came today. Okay guys, so one more thing before we head back to the van. We stumbled upon Captain William Wood right here. And on the back of his stone, it actually says he wanted to be buried on the battlefield. So this was actually the Texas encampment area of the battlefield. Once stood tents of people setting up, planning their next moves as they were getting ready to storm ever so much closer toward San Jacinto, which is just beyond that fence far there, right there. So since he wanted to be buried on the battlefield, somewhere in this vicinity is where we would find his final resting place. Now, is this the actual resting place? Probably not. Typically they would mark different people falling and it would be subject to change based on what was going on. So if battle was happening here, they, they might have buried him over here, for example. But nevertheless, this is the honor for Captain Wood right here at San Jacinto. Okay guys, I have had a wonderful time and yeah. I hope that you have as well, Nebraska. Very informational, I had a good time and I learned a lot. I agree. I had no idea about most of the things that we learned about today. Although I have been singing my little happy Texas songs hoping to absorb them into Nebraska. No. <laughs> what, what do we do when we hear the stars at night are big and bright? Yes! If nothing else, we accomplished that today, guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it just, yeah, you're gonna know before long. We're gonna do enough Texas videos where we're gonna sing all those songs. So until next time, guys, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. If you liked today's video, hit the little like, and I come out with new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. So maybe we'll be able to convince this guy to go on a couple more adventures with us in the future, and uh, I don't think we wore him out too much. Yeah.